If you like to train for progress in disciplines that do not directly support one another, then you can call yourself a hybrid athlete. But it's important to not make any of these six common mistakes that could slow down that progress. In today's video, I'm going to break down exactly why. I think it's important to kick things off with a bit of introduction and context as to what exactly is a hybrid athlete. It has become a little bit diluted as a term in recent years, mainly due to TikTokers, in my humble opinion. But nonetheless, it is a term that's very meaningful and important to me and one that I think has loads of value. And at the end of the day, if the label of hybrid athlete, whilst it might upset some zealots on the internet, means that an individual, a group of individual, thousands of individuals, hundreds of thousands of individuals all over the world are trying new things and enjoying the process of progressing and developing themselves in new things, that can only be positive in my mind. So whatever label you attach to yourself, I don't really care. But with the term hybrid athlete and hybrid hybrid training, there are clear routes that I'll break down for you in just a second. What I'm very keen to avoid with this channel and the sort of messaging is to make sure that people don't get too biased within their own box. And by that, I mean that triathletes and runners have been arguing over things for many years. Powerlifters and bodybuilders have been arguing over many things for many years. Crossfitters and high rocks athletes are arguing over this, that, and the next thing. When at the end of the day, if people are committing to making progress in their individual sport and getting value in doing so, shouldn't we all celebrate that and just be giving it each other high fives. Some people are more competitive than others, some people are more self-driven than others, but at the end of the day, if people are committing to progress, that is immensely valuable. So hybrid training has a clear definition, and it was coined by Alex Viada in 2013. The book was published in 2015, and whilst there have been some people online since then that have tried to claim some sort of ownership over it, ultimately the internet has the receipts. And the definition is as follows. The concurrent training of different athletic disciplines that do not inherently support one another and whose disparate components are not essential to success at any one sport, which in simple terms means committing to progress in two or more sports that don't directly, by training them both concurrently, make you better at either or. So powerlifting isn't going to make you a better 5k runner, 5k running isn't going to make you a better powerlifter, but committing to making progress in both simultaneously is what falls under the definition and the remit of hybrid athlete. A huge part of where this discussion really comes from is around the interference effect. The interference effect was a concept born out of a very familiar and simple reality, which was a student trying to impress his professor. Robert Hickson, a recreational strength athlete, was reporting to Professor Helosi, who was a recreational runner. And in a bid to impress Professor Helosi, Robert was going on runs with him around the campus. And what he started to realize that his strength training was taking an impact as his running volume was increasing. He had a discussion with Professor Helosi and he said, you know what, why don't you make this your first research project? So that he did. And in 1980, Robert Hickson essentially took three groups, A, B and C, where A was doing heavy hard lifting three days a week group B was doing pretty hard effort running three days a week and group C was doing both combined. So what happened as part of the research process was that after a number of weeks, group C started to see their progress tail off. And at this point, interference occurred, which is where the phrase ultimately was coined. But if you're committing to hybrid training, you should be comfortable with the reality that you are performing suboptimally. And I think that's a really important thing to highlight because if you are coming into this conversation thinking that you can do that, then you're in for a pretty rough ride. So the first mistake that people often make is taking 100% of a lifting program and 100% of a running triathlon or endurance program and going like that, combining the two to 200% output essentially. And I think we can all agree the math ain't mathing. This can be a huge reason why a lot of people commit to trying to balance training disciplines and end up feeling burnt out, destroyed, and like their progress is dropping off 
a cliff. What we're wanting to achieve with hybrid training is finding an effective balance for the minimum effective amount of training for the maximum adaptation. So the general recommendation here is to create or find a program that is looking for balance rather than simply chucking more stuff at the wall in the hope that some of it's going to stick. So the second mistake that people often make is a big one and that is under eating because if you come from a lifting background where you know that your daily maintenance calories are 3,000 a day for example and you start adding in some more endurance dominant training you are going to increase increase your energy expenditure throughout the week. And if you don't balance the books by consuming more calories within the context of that training week, you're inadvertently going to be putting yourself in a deficit. And as we should all know, when you're in a deficit, it's going to affect performance, it's going to affect cognitive ability, it's going to leave you feeling hungrier, irritable, and is ultimately going to potentially impact the muscle that you've worked so hard to build, the strength that you've worked so hard to build. And if you're not aware that you're in a deficit, it might leave you thinking that it's the endurance training that's killing your gains and not the fact you're actually ineffectively fueling. This often means that you're going to end up eating quite a lot of food. And if that's something you struggle with, this is where high volume, long distance endurance stuff can become difficult when balancing it with strength or hypertrophy work, but that's a part of the game. So it's something that we need to work around. And if you're looking for ways to supplement that, then I have several recommendations. My protein provide me with all of the easy to access protein sources that I need on a day-to-day -day basis in the forms of snacks that sit around the office that Jamie, who sat behind the camera currently, pillages on a day-to-day -day basis. We then have whey protein for easy access protein on a day-to-day -day basis, which means I can just nail carbohydrates after every endurance session. And then over here, if I just want to sip on some additional protein throughout the day, clear whey is, I, I'm still not quite sure if I believe the nutritional information on the back because this tastes like juice, but is just under 100 calories worth of protein, which is wild. I also make sure to keep on top of my electrolytes on a daily basis with hydration sachets. But that is ultimately only all relevant within the context of supplementing your diet. The sum total of your energy expenditure balanced with the amount you're eating on a week by week, day by day basis is what matters. And with hybrid training, as you're adding in endurance volume, your expenditure is gonna go up. So your intake needs to go up. Point number three is not having specific goals. And I appreciate that might be a little bit boring for those of you that like going with the flow and jumping in and out of this class and that class and this run and that thing. But ultimately, hybrid training is trying to optimize the suboptimal, whereby you are taking a hit on how much training you can commit to each individual discipline. So you really want to try and refine that so that you're getting the most bang for your buck in terms of the inputs versus outputs and adaptation over time. What you want to be doing is working backwards from specific goals so that you can establish your training towards that, because the biggest and most important principle in fitness as a whole in terms of adaptation is specificity and consistency. Combine those two things and you should be very much moving in the right direction. But with hybrid training especially, you're working at a reduced capacity that you can put in training-wise to be able to adapt to the goals that you have. To summarize, have specific goals, work backwards from there in terms of your training and get some skin in the game. Sign up to that event. And if any of you feel a desire to sign up to an event right now, do it and let us know in the comments what it is. And we can all say, you know what, go on, have the best race of your life, my friend. Mistake number four is thinking that more is always better. And I know that's pretty contrary to a lot of what's presented on line in the fitness industry content creator space where it seems to be a, a race to the top of the hustle culture ladder. 25 and I'm like man I've really been here like. Bro I'd rip both my legs off and arms to be 25 <laughs> on some real shit. I'd give up everything I have to be 25 just to play again. But no, less can often be more, especially when it comes to effectively balancing hybrid training goals, because we only have so much to give on a week by week basis. We have a thing called MRV, which is maximum recoverable volume. It's ultimately an intangible, immeasurable metric, but it's going to be impacted by things like your sleep quality, arguments with your family, your workload, alcohol intake, your nutrition quality, all of these things that make it quite an airy fairy thing. But what we're trying to do is basically sit below our MRV on a week by week basis so that we can make sustainable progress over time rather than just oorahing our way into a hole of fatigue that we struggle to get back out of and then start to have a bit of an identity crisis because we can't work really hard all the time and therefore feel like we're being lazy, which is a trap that I know a lot of people I've spoken to have fallen into, but the more sustainable athlete over time is the one that will make the more progress over time and is therefore the more efficient athlete, if that makes sense. Mistake number five kind of falls into the same category as number four, but that is to simply go AM PM split, whereby somebody is lifting in the morning and running in the evening or running in the morning and lifting in the evening and just thinking, there we go, job done. 
10 sessions across the week, nice. What you can easily do there is just get a bit dogmatic about what you do on a day-by-day -day basis and you lose the intention behind the programming. As I've just mentioned, more isn't always better and just working hard all the time isn't the solution. Otherwise, Kenyan runners would simply never stop running. And given that that's not what they do, I think it's important for us, mere mortals, recreational athletes, to take that on board as well. Those of you watching will likely have families, you'll have jobs, you'll have lots of things to manage, which means that you can't just train all the time and beat yourself into the ground. You need your brain to be working, you need your body to be working, and you need to make sure that your training is enjoyable and rewarding for you rather than just beating you up into a hole of oblivion, fatigue, tiredness, hunger, and pain. So rather than simply going, I'm gonna do this in the morning and this in the evening and make that five days a week, look at what you are training for. Look at what you want to achieve and formulate a training program with that in mind. That's the important thing to consider and generalizing your programming for non-general training goals or training adaptations isn't gonna be the most effective way to get there. What we've learned with working with over 6,000 athletes all over the world is that these are the things that are important and intention behind programming is what matters most. And that does not only apply to hybrid training, that applies to all forms of training. So if you found yourself in the trap of for convenience or not maybe thinking more about the intention of your program and just gonna go, oh, I'm gonna run in the morning, lift in the evening, then that's where it's probably worth going back to the drawing board a little bit and thinking about the logic behind doing what you're doing. Number six is focusing on perfection over practicality and I'm going to call this the Redditor Clause and that is where you find yourself so deep in the research and the theory that you end up spending so much time trying this, trying that, tearing it up here after two weeks, changing the whole approach, varying this, varying that, splitting things out like this and asking questions on how much is the interference effect going to affect this, that and the other and et cetera, et cetera, without actually just getting your head down and doing what's practical and moving things forward. Because this as a concept, hybrid training is is not that well developed in terms of research because where it's different to concurrent training is that you're training to make progress in individual disciplines simultaneously. As I've said, the best and most high-performing athlete is the most sustainable athlete and specific consistency is generally what gets a person there. So if you find yourself constantly getting bogged down in trying to apply research paper X alongside research paper Y and then coming up with the perfect framework of this, that and the other, but then your parents come to stay and you can't actually get to that training on a Wednesday and you think, oh no, the whole program's ruined, I need to start again then actually just getting your head down and committing to the training with what's practical first and foremost will probably get you a lot further. Perfect does not exist. All we can do is better inform our decision-making process so that we can make decisions around what is effective and how we can adapt towards our specific goals. So that's essentially that. Those are six common hybrid training mistakes and I appreciate I haven't given you anything completely pithy that you can immediately apply to your exact circumstances but that is the point. All I'm trying to do with these videos, all we're trying to do speaking to this general spectrum of anyone at the end of a strength spectrum versus endurance spectrum and everything in between is, is help you understand the decision making process that we use with the athletes we've worked with. We use for everything that I've achieved over the years, everything that Johnny's achieved over the years, everything that the team in this building's achieved over the years and what we found huge success with our athletes on. And I think that's what's really important to highlight is I think the fitness industry tries to push and we've become used to really sound bitey, podcast clippy statements and takes when in reality, a lot of the time it depends. And that's not a cop out answer because often it depends on the person's strengths, weaknesses, inputs, outputs, stresses, fatigue management, skill, and everything that goes into it. So what we should always try and be doing is looking at ourselves or athletes that we're coaching or other people through the lens of their context and informing ourselves with the decision-making processes to apply these rules and considerations to that person, to ourselves, for the sake of our progress, their progress. Those are six hybrid training mistakes. Don't forget to like the video, comment with your thoughts and or feelings down below, hit subscribe, and keep an eye out for the next couple of weeks because there are some big training sessions coming up for me ahead of a 250 kilometer ultramarathon at the end of March in one go with no sleep scheduled in. Bad idea, huh? Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time.